Dear children, today we will learn about the third application of dimensional analysis. What is the third application? That is to derive a new relation between various physical quantities. That means some physical quantities will be given to you and you will find the relation between them by using dimensional analysis. For example, centripetal force centripetal force the expression for centripetal force we will find. In the question it will be given that centripetal force acting upon a body in uniform circular motion depends upon the mass of the body, the velocity of the body and radius of the circular path. Without knowing the concept of centripetal force, we can find the expression of centripetal force. That centripetal force depends upon depends upon mass m of the body velocity v of the body and radius r of the circular path only it will be given now we will find the expression of centripetal force in terms of mass, velocity and radius. Then how will we proceed that centripetal force depends upon mass, velocity and radius. But how centripetal force depends upon mass that is not given, how force depends upon velocity also that is not given, how it depends upon radius, it is also not given, only it is given that force depends upon mass, velocity and radius. Then you will write f proportional to m to the power a, that means if a is positive then directly proportional, if a is negative then it is inversely proportional, if a is 1 f is directly proportional to m, if f is proportional to m to the if a is 2, then f is directly proportional to m square. Similarly, if a is minus 1, f inversely proportional to m, if a is minus 2, then f inversely proportional to m square. Similarly, proportional to v to the power b you write, proportional to r to the power c you will write. Now you combine this f proportional to m to the power a, v to the power b, r to the power c or f is equal to when you replace proportionality sign by equal to sign there comes a proportionality constant k, k m to the power a, v to the power b, r to the power c. Now our aim is to find the values of a, b and c. Now you take dimension. Taking dimensions of equation 1, taking dimensions of equation 1, and you remember this k is the dimension less proportionality constant. Constant. Now you take dimension, dimension of force m1 l1 t minus 2, you know it, k is dimensional less and dimension of m it is mass capital M, then power is a, velocity l1 t minus 1 to the power b 
radius radial to the power six. That is m to the power a. This power is one, and it is a m to the power a. L to the power a b, and here l to the power c. That is l to the power b plus c. T to the power minus b. You take it is as equation number two. Now you compare the dimensions of both LHS and RHS. Comparing the dimensions, you see here m to the power one, here m to the power a. That means a is equal to one. Similarly, l to the power one here, here l to the power b plus c. That means b plus c is equal to one. Similarly, minus b is equal to minus two. Now you solve this. Solving this, you get a is equal to one. Here b is equal to two. When you put two in place of b in this equation, you will find two plus c is equal to one, or c is equal to minus one. These are the values of a, b, and c you got. Now you put these values in equation one. From equation one, from equation one, you see f is equal to k m to the power a means one, v to the power b means two, and r to the power c means minus one. That equal to k m square by r. Equation number three. Now you got here f directly proportional to mass, f directly proportional to square of the velocity, and f by f inversely proportional to radius of the circular path. And the value of k that you cannot determine. Or that cannot be obtained from dimensional analysis. It is one of the drawback of dimensional analysis. So, but if you know the value of k, you will write. If you don't know the value of this proportionality constant k, you don't write. But I know the value of k, so I will write. But k is equal to one. The value of k is one. Therefore, f is equal to m square by r it is the expression for centripetal force in this way you will find the relation another question i will discuss here Taking, taking force, length, and time as fundamental quantities, fundamental quantities, find the dimensions of. We have obtained dimensional formula of the dimensions in terms of fundamental quantities, mass, length, time. But here you take force, length, and time as fundamental quantities. You find the dimensions of mass. Then how will we get it? You take mass dimension. F to the power a, L to the power b, T to the power c. It is your hypothetical question. You will proceed like this. And mass, it is m. Force, you know it is m1, l1, t minus 2 to the power a. 
L to the power B, T to the power C, that is M to the power A, L to the power A plus B, T to the power minus 2A here, and here C, minus 2A plus C. You see, M to the power A, L to the power here A, here B is L to the power A plus B, and T to the power minus 2A here, and here C. Minus two a plus c. Now you compare a is equal to one. A plus b is equal to here. There is no l, so it is a plus b is zero, and minus two a plus c is also zero. When you put the value of a here, then b will get minus one. When you put a value here. Then minus two plus c is equal to zero, or c is equal to two. These are the values of a, b, and c. Now you put these values in this expression. Therefore, mass will be f to the power one, l to the power b means minus one, and t to the power C means two. It is the expression for dimensional formula of mass in terms of force, length, and time. These are all about your dimensional analysis. Now, what are the limitations? Limitations of dimensional analysis. limitations of dimensional analysis first one it cannot give any information information about the dimension less proportionality constant, dimension less proportionality constant. Already told that dimension less proportionality constant, that is k, the value of k you cannot find by using dimensional analysis. It is one of the drawbacks. Now come to cannot derive. A physical quantity which depends upon more than three quantities A, M, L, and T. Next. Cannot derive a relation which is a sum or difference of a number of terms, number of terms. Next. First type of relation that V is equal to U plus FT or S is equal to UT plus RP square. This like relations you cannot find by using dimensional analysis. Also, it cannot derive a physical quantity which involves trigonometric, logarithmic exponential functions exponential functions 
many relations are there in physics which depends upon exponential function, logarithmic function, trigonometric functions. So these relations or this formula uh, cannot be obtained by using dimensional analysis. These are the drawbacks or the limitations of dimensional analysis. In the next class, we will discuss about significant figures.